In the previous video, we characterized two of the three modes of planar motion. Those were translation and fixed axis rotation. And we were able to mathematically characterize the position, the velocity, and the acceleration. Here what we're going to look at is this third mode of motion in 2D, which is general planar motion. Now recall that general planar motion is motion that is neither pure translation nor pure rotation. It is a mix of the two. And here's the big idea. The big, the big idea here is that general planar motion can be considered as the sum of translation and fixed axis rotation. Now, consider this random object over here at time t. And we're going to look at two points on that object, points a and b. At time t plus delta t, the object is now at this position over here. As we can see, it has both rotated and translated. We can define a few position vectors here. So this one here, we could define it as dRA, which is the displacement vector of point A. And this one here, we could define as dRB, which is the displacement vector for point B. We can also define a vector over here going from A to B, and we can call this R of B with respect to A, and that's just a relative position vector as we did for fixed axis rotation. So what you can see here is that as we mentioned, it can be considered as the sum of a translation and fixed axis rotation. So imagine that we simply translate the link from point A to point A, if we call this A prime and B prime. Okay? So it might look something like this. So if it were pure translation. And then imagine that point A prime is a fixed axis, and then we just rotate point B about point A prime. So here we have the translation, and over here we have this rotation. So to get from time t to time t plus delta t to this initial position over here, to this final position over here. We can translate the body and then rotate the body about point A prime. So with this idea in mind, let's define it, or rather characterize it mathematically. So again, we can draw the displacement vector dRA, and we have here dRB. Now this orange object here that I drew is if the object underwent translation. If it undergoes translation, then over here, point B would actually have displaced an amount that is dRA, since it is translation. Now the second step in the process is the fixed axis rotation after the translation. So recall that if we define this vector here 
R of B with respect to A, then this vector over here will be dr b with respect to a. So the displacement of this relative position vector. Okay, so again, this big idea here is that general planar motion, which is neither pure translation or rotation, can be considered as the sum of a translation and a fixed axis rotation. So looking at link AB, we can say that it translates as if it were translating with point A, and then we have fixed axis rotation about point A. Okay. So we can say that the displacement of point B is equal to the displacement of point A plus the displacement of the relative position vector B with respect to A. And this is just the vector addition that we see. I'm just going to circle it over here. So it's just this vector addition over here. So if we want to know the displacement of point B for a rigid body that is undergoing uh, general planar motion, we can look at the translation of another point, point A, plus the fixed axis rotation of point B with respect to point A. Now, the velocity of point B is just the time rate of change of the displacement vector. So therefore, it'll just be VA plus VB with respect to A. So right there, we see explicitly this is our translation component. Recall that for translation, VB is equal to VA, but we have an additional component, which is this V of B with respect to A, which is the rotation about point A. Now recall for fixed axis rotation, so from fixed axis rotation, we know that the linear velocity v is equal to the angular velocity omega crossed with the position vector. So for general planar motion, the absolute velocity, Vb, is equal to the velocity of translation of point A plus the relative velocity of point B with respect to point A, which is omega k crossed with R of B with respect to A. So if we know the linear velocity of a certain point, let's call it point A, and we know the angular velocity of the rigid body undergoing general planar motion, so that's omega, and we also know something about its geometry, which would help us define this relative position vector RB with respect to A, we can find the linear velocity at point B, VB. So we can extend this to the acceleration. So the acceleration will be equal to the acceleration at point A plus 
the acceleration of point B with respect to A. So this tells us that the acceleration at any point B is equal to the acceleration at a reference point A plus the rotational acceleration of point B about that reference point which we are calling A. So that relative acceleration AB with respect to A mimics fixed axis rotation about A. So if you recall from fixed axis rotation, we have two components. So we're going to have the same thing with this relative acceleration, which is just similar to fixed axis rotation. So we have a tangential component, which is equal to alpha k crossed with r of b with respect to a. So that's a tangential acceleration. Okay, at a 90 degree angle perpendicular to the position vector. And we have a normal acceleration, which is equal to minus omega squared in the negative r of b with respect to a direction. So what this is telling us is that the linear acceleration B is equal to the linear acceleration A plus the relative acceleration of B with respect to A, which is decomposed into two components. This one here, which is the tangential acceleration. And this component here, termed the normal acceleration. And this is our linear acceleration for 2D general planar motion. So if we assume, you know, we have some random body we have point A and point B, and it has an acceleration at A and maybe an acceleration at B like this. We can say that this is equal to, so I'm going to try to reproduce the body here, it is equal to saying that, oops, we have a translational acceleration, and I should call this AA. Okay, so that's translation with A, plus a rotation about A. Okay, so that rotation about A, so we're going to say then that we are assuming that A is fixed over here. And so point B over here is going to have a normal acceleration and a tangential acceleration. So this will be our RA, B with respect to A in the tangential direction. And this is A, B with respect to A. Sorry, this is the tangential direction. And this here is the normal direction. And we can also define this angular acceleration alpha in the k direction. So in this video, We've mathematically characterized the third mode of general planar uh, of 2D planar motion, and this is general planar motion. We started with the assumption that we can characterize this as the summation of a translational component and a rotational component, and we've used ideas from 
the previous video of translation and fixed axis rotation to fill out our mathematical equations for the characterization of the velocity, the linear velocity and linear acceleration of any point on a rigid body undergoing general planar motion.